The World Health Organization is encouraging manufacturers to explore the true heat stability of all existing vaccines and to make both new and existing vaccines more tolerant of temperatures higher than the traditional cold chain of 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. This way they can be licensed and labeled for use in a controlled temperature chain, also known as CTC. Everybody dreams of a vaccine that can be kept in the pocket of the health worker, doesn't need to be actually kept in a refrigerator or in a vaccine carrier. The Gates Foundation is very committed to trying to um, accelerate the formulation of vaccines that fit within the controlled temperature chain, the CTC uh, designation. I think 10 years from now we could find a large number of vaccines that have required the traditional cold chain are reformulated and relicensed to be used in the controlled temperature chain. I think the impact of that is going to be twofold. One, it's going to give us greater reach. And secondly, it's going to enable us to do that job at a lower cost. It is a win-win for Gavi. Uh, for, for countries and populations uh, that are targeted for vaccination and also the vaccine industry by resorting to innovative uh, technologies such as the control temperature chain. So I think there are a lot of good reasons or incentives for vaccine manufacturers to be um, excited about and committed to uh, developing vaccines that fit in the controlled temperature chain. First is the incentive of making sure that your vaccine gets out to everybody who needs it. But if you want to take a more competitive lens to it, it may turn out that having a vaccine in the controlled temperature chain actually gives you competitive advantage over those who don't. The need to use more vaccines in a CTC has been endorsed by major global health stakeholders and is part of the Global Vaccine Action Plan's overarching framework for activities from now until 2020. This is why testing of more vaccines for use in a CTC is underway, including vaccines against human papillomavirus, hepatitis B and cholera. As an industry, all our members are supporting the World Health Organization's efforts to implement the Global Vaccine Action Plan. There are challenges, and those challenges, of course, can be technical on our side, in order to, to assess that a vaccine can be used outside of the normal cold chain, even for a few hours, uh, you have to test that indeed it is possible. It is an expensive uh, operation. And once you do this test, uh, you have to then submit to a regulator uh, that will assess that the studies that you have done are in fact valid according to the standard that are set up by the regulator. And of course, uh, then you have to submit for a labeling uh, that will mention uh, the CTC conditions on, on the label. It's very important that CTC has the support of national and global regulatory authorities because that regulatory support means the CTC usage has gone through the standard vaccine safety system. I think the, to further facilitate the process of CTC use, what is required for the manufacturer is number one, the commitment from the international procurement agencies that they will buy that vaccine after it is licensed and WHO pre-qualified into CTC. And countries are also going to contribute by giving training to their people. If that assurance is there, manufacturers will definitely go for the CTC product. We want to be part of the solution uh, to improve access to high quality vaccine everywhere in the world, regardless of where people live. So CTC is a true revolution for those that have been involved in immunization for many years. <laughs>